Magandang araw po sa inyong lahat, Crossroads Church. At uh, binabati po namin kayo ng may pag-ibig at kagalakan tulot ng Panginoon lamang. Alam ko po na ang ilan po sa atin o karamihan sa atin ay mga pagod mula po sa paglilinis ng kanilang mga tahanan. Dulot ng biglang pagbaha ano po, uh, ng mula sa bagyong Ulysses. At salamat sa kanyang lakas, sa kanyang pag-asa na dinudulot po sa atin sa tuwina. At ngayon ay araw ng ating pagsamba na why matagpuan tayo ng Diyos na buong puso, isip, kaluluwa, lakas at spirito po natin ay talagang nakatuon sa Kanya. At ang ating po kaluluwa ay tunay na nauuhaw sa Panginoon. At siya ang ating um, satisfaction, siya ang ating uh, fullness. Kaya po sa umagang ito, talagang lalapit po tayo sa Kanya, tudulog tayo sa Kanya, at magpapaturo mula sa Kanyang mga salita. Tayo po muna ay manalangin. Aming Diyos, aming Ama, nagpapasalamat kami kung paano mo kami muling binuklod bilang isang uh, church here in Crossroad Church. Kahit po magkakaiba kami ng lugar ngayon, kahit iba-iba pa rin ang aming mga dalahing uh, situations, alam po namin na meron kaming iisang Diyos na siya nagbubuklod sa amin, nagtuturo upang kami ay tunay na sumamba in the spirit and in truth. Tulungan mo kami, Panginoon, na talagang matama namin makapakinggan ng iyong mga salita. And Holy Spirit, teach us to obey and to really change lives all for your glory. Thank you, Jesus, for being with us today. You are our Savior, our Master. All the glory to you. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So, muli po ating itutuloy ang ating series, Defining Moments. Pero balikan nga po natin, no? mula po dito, ano po ba ang kahulugan talaga ng defining moment? So, number one, it is a decision. no? It is a point in our lives na talagang tayo ay nakakagawa ng pivotal decision at uh, na-experience natin ang kahulugang tunay ng buhay, kagaya po ng nangyari kay Rahab. At ito rin po defining moment ay nagdudulot talaga ng tunay na pagbabago from the inside out. It shapes us from who we are to what we should become. Just like the lives of Isaiah in the Old Testament and in the life of Zacchaeus in the New Testament. Well, also, a defining moment gives us meaning. No? Kahulugan. The time that shows very clearly what something is really all about. So, tinuturo sa atin ang kahulugan ng mga karanasan natin. At ito ang nagbibigay ng, ng direksyon sa atin. Like, what we have learned about complacency. What we have learned about negligence and laziness. So, Defining moment is also a set of opportunities. No? Ito po ay uh, pagbibigay sa atin ng pagkakataon na magbago, lumago, at magkaroon ng impact sa mga tao, sa ating paligid, at maging sa ating bayan at sa buong mundo. Well, ano nga ba ang mga simple opportunities no, na ini-embrace po natin sa buhay natin? Like, siguro yung choosing a college, yan, mga anong kurso na kukuhanin. Another opportunity is uh, meeting your spouse no, and getting married, having children. And sometimes, no, ang pagkakasakit natin ay uh, isang defining moment din sa atin, isang opportunity to know who God is and who we are before Him. At gayon din naman, ang mga pangyayari na minsan itong mga defining moments ay hindi po natin ito pinipili eh at hindi natin mapipili pero ito ay uh, pinag-iisipang mabuti yan uh, it is intentionally thought out or ang mga defining moments po natin ay resulta ng mga past decisions natin whether good or bad no may mga nagawa tayong mga desisyon na nagbibigay ng uh, uh, defining moments sa uh, kapanahunan natin ngayon in the present time at ito ay magdadala sa atin tungo sa hinaharap. Just like what is happening to us. Pandemic. 
COVID-19, it is a defining moment for all of us. Well, as Christians, bilang mga anak ng Diyos at tagasunod ng Panginoong Heso Kristo, ang buhay natin ay punong-puno at napakarami ng mga defining moments. Decision, transformation, no po, mga experiences na kailangan po nating matutunan, knowledge na kailangan nating maalamanan, at gayon din naman, mga opportunities na dumarating sa atin. But this time around, no, we face these defining moments not on our own understanding, not on our own knowledge, but we come no, and we make decisions from these defining moments based on our faith in the Lord. And kaya kung nahaharap tayo sa mga defining moments, sa mga crossroads ng ating buhay, mga pagpili at mga karanasan na talagang kailangan nating matutunan, we don't just embrace it and jump on it no? based on our own knowledge. But this time around, we look up to God and we seek His light and His blessings to walk upon these defining moments. And Jesus Himself had a defining moment that affected everyone who ever lived. So ngayong umaga na to, ngayong araw na to, we will talk about Jesus' defining moments. Ang kanyang mga pagpili ay tunay na nakaapekto po sa lahat sa atin. At ang defining moment na ito ay hindi lang basta experience. Kung hindi he was able to follow the will of God even to the point of death at the cross. So let's take a look at Jesus' defining moment in Matthew chapter 26, 36 to 46. Gethsemane or Gethsemane. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for the cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their, uh, their eyes were very heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed that third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you all sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come. And the Son of Man is delivered to the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. The Lord bless the reading of his word. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, this is the place you know, where the defining moment of Jesus happened. I am blessed uh, together with Pastor Al and, the and some of our pastors and friends here in Crossworld uh, last November 2018 when we were able to see Gethsemane up close and personal. Well, seeing Gethsemane uh, right before my eyes and stepping on it and touching the, the very place where Jesus had prayed according to the tourist guides, no uh, talaga po nakaka-melt ng puso. Wala po akong masabing words. I just cried and I felt 
the holiness of God and His deep love for me and for the whole world in that very place. This is where Jesus' defining moment happened in the Garden of Gethsemane. So how did Jesus pray in Gethsemane? And what can Jesus' Gethsemane prayer teach us? So mula po sa mga readings natin in the book of the Gospels, dito po tayo hahango ng ating mga lalakaran patungkol sa defining moments ng Panginoong Yesus at ano ang significance nito sa ating mga buhay sa kapanahonan ngayon. Well, Jesus' lifestyle talaga po of prayer is so amazing. Makita po natin that throughout Jesus' ministry, Jesus exemplified prayer. Makita po natin, oh, when crowds were pressing on Him, talaga po He will set aside Himself from the crowd, seek the Lord, seek God, and pray to Him in silence and solitude. And, solitude. and when thousands of people were needing help, na po, at uh, walang makain, talaga po, wow, in, in a moment of prayer, we see how the miracle happened feeding thousands of people. And Jesus also showed no, the importance of prayer para po sa mga susunod ng mga steps sa tatahakin po niya no, sa kanyang public ministry. And also, it was exciting to know when the disciples learned about Jesus praying and the disciples asked him how to pray. Jesus taught the disciples to pray. Not only that we see you know, how Jesus exemplified the lifestyle of prayer, he also exemplified a quiet spirit, you know, a rested spirit in times of difficulties. Like, kamakailan lamang napag-usapan natin ang mga bagyo na po na kanilang naranasan sa Sea of Galilee. Pero we will see Jesus in the Bible na talagang He was totally composed and unruffled. Hindi po talaga siya nagtinag at naapektuhan ng bagyo at lakas ng hangin o ng mga alon. When He faced demonic op opposition and satanic temptation, wow! Jesus was so composed and talaga pong he was rested knowing who he is before God the Father. And even we see no, towards the end of his ministry, facing the Pharisees and all those who accuse, accusing him, talaga pong makita natin na with total composure, Jesus na po, faced all his oppositions. So both, no, we uh, can see Jesus exemplifying prayer and a, and a composure that is really rested in times of difficulties. But uh, as we read, no, po, yung binasa po natin mga talata sa Matthew chapter 26, uh, we can see here a different kind of Jesus, a different kind of Jesus praying, a different kind of Jesus, no, po, talking to the Father, and also we see here a different kind of prayer. Ayan. Here in Gethsemane, nakita ng mga disciples, saramdaman nila that Jesus was greatly distressed. At um, kung mapapansin po natin, Jesus cast himself to the ground, no? agonizing in prayer. Ito lamang po yung pagkakataon na talagang he was all alone by himself and praying with such posture of agony and sorrow before the Lord. Ibig sabihin, something terrible was going to happen. And in fact, something terrible was happening right then and there within the heart of Jesus. Wala yung composure, wala yung restedness. He was trembling, he was agonizing, and he felt the overwhelming sorrow. Jesus knew it. The time has come. And the disciples were beginning no po, to comprehend everything siguro na sinabi ng Panginoon sa kanila kung paano matatapos ang kanyang buhay. 
Jesus praying at the Garden of Gethsemane is totally a different kind of prayer. This is Jesus' defining moment. And if you will ask me how come it became a defining moment in the life of Jesus, yes, his prayer defines his life because it first and foremost defines his love for you and me. So let's talk about how did Jesus pray in Gethsemane? Paano nga ba siyang nanalangin? Hindi po siya na, nanalangin with the rote kind of prayer ng our Father, which He taught to the disciples. Yet, I believe itong, itong our Father in Heaven prayer na ito ng Panginoon, itinuro niya mula sa kanyang sariling karanasan, no po, sa pagkilala niya sa Diyos Ama. But this was not the prayer of Jesus. And this is not how he prayed during that time. And he was not also doing a breathing practice, inhale, exhale. No, In fact, he cannot inhale and he cannot do the breathing experience, the practice of breathing, uh, breathing experiences. Why? Because he was filled no, po, with sorrow. This prayer in the Garden of Gethsemane was uh, grittier. Talaga po nakakatakot. Uh, messier, talaga pong drenched in tears and sorrow. He was shaking from the inside out and the grief, the anguish, and the sorrow talaga pong nagkahalo-halo na po sa kanyang kaluluwa and therefore his prayer was unedited. Talaga pong it, it was a, a raw prayer. It It, it came from a heart that was really broken before God. And then sabi nga po dito in Matthew 26 verse 38, ito po yung mode, the extracted emotion of Jesus while he was praying in the garden of Gethsemane. And sabi niya dito, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. In Mark 14 verse 33, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. And he said here, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. And in Luke 22 verse 44, he said here, being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat was like drops of blood failing to the ground. This is how he was praying. Overwhelmed. Punong-puno, na, na overwhelmed, na overshadow po siya. Umapaw, ang alin po, ang sorrow, ang grief. Na halos ikamatay ng Panginoon. And what was the exact prayer of Jesus? Matthew 26, 39, 42, and 44. Ito po ang kanyang panalangin. Ang sabi po ng Panginoong Jesus, Matthew 26:39 My Father if it is possible may this cup be taken from me yet not as I will but as you will Verse 42 He went away a second time and prayed My Father if it is possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it may your will be done Verse 44, so he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Jesus, the third time, that, uh, for all the, the times that he prayed, for three times, mayroon lamang siyang iisang panalangin. At ang panalangin po niya na ito ay talagang pouring out the unedited truth na kung ano ang nararanasan po niya in this time no po, of sorrow and grief. Three times he prayed to the Lord na, Oh God, Oh Father, let this cup pass from me, but not my will, but your will be done. With this thought no po, ng, ng panalangin ng Panginoong Jesus, makikita po natin ang dalawang bahagi ng kanyang pananalangin na ito. Number one, he laid down the cause of his sufferings. So laying down the cause of his sufferings. Sabi dito, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, 
but as you will. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. And then the third time he prayed, inulit niya po ito. What is in this cup? Na iniiwasan at naisa ng iwasan ng Panginoon. At ang sabi niya dito, the cup described in Psalm 75, 6-8, it says here, Judgment does not come from the east or from the west, from the north or from the south. It is God who is the judge, condemning some and acquitting others. The Lord holds a cup in his hand, filled with the strong wine of his anger. He pours it out and all the wicked drink it. They drink it down to the last drop. Have you had this glimpse of the anger of God? This wrath of God. At ito ang nakita ng Panginoong Jesus. Ang kopa, ang inumin, no po, ang lalagyan, ng inumin ng Diyos na punong-puno ng galit, na ibubuhos po ng Panginoong Diyos Ama, no mismo sa Panginoong Jesus, starting this time in the Garden of Gethsemane. The cup of anger. Not only that, in Isaiah 51, 17, Jerusalem, wake up, rouse yourself and get up. You have drunk the cup of punishment that the Lord in his anger gave you to drink. You drank it down and it made you stagger. You see here, no? The cup of God is a cup of punishment. Kaparusahan. At ano po yung kaparusahan na yun? It is in Revelations 14, 9 to 11. And sabi po dito, a third angel followed the first two saying in a loud voice, those who worship the beast and its image and receive the mark on their forehead or on their hand will themselves drink God's wine, the wine of his fury, which he has poured at full strength into the cup of his anger. All who do this will be tormented in fire and sulfur before the holy angels and the Lamb. The smoke of the fire that torments them goes up forever and ever. There is no relief day or night for those who worship the beast and its image for anyone who has the mark of its name. You see here, mga kapatid, this is what Jesus saw in the Garden of Gethsemane. The cup of God's wrath, the cup of God's punishment, the cup of God's fury against the sinners no po, na ang dulo po ng lahat na ito ay ang pagkakaroon ng yung pong torment no po, in the hell of fire in the in the fire of hell no po, in the last days Jesus dread drinking this wrath of God kinatakutan ng Panginoong Hesus ang pag-inom sa saro na ito no po, ng, ng Diyos Ama, ang kapaitan ng galit ng Diyos, ang kapaitan, ang, ka, ang kasuklam-suklam na nalagim, na katsura ng punishment ng Panginoon, ng Ama sa buong mundo. That's why, no, hindi po talaga na, na, na ibsan, no po, at hindi nawala ang, ang, ang sorrow, ang trouble ng Panginoong Jesus in in his prayer because he saw all this he knew all this jesus agony was due to the cross which loomed before him he saw the cross and what was in the cross the anger the wrath of god brought by the sins of man he was not in agony because he would be forsaken by men Hindi po siya nalungkot, hindi siya in sorrow, hindi siya in grief because iiwanan siya ng kanyang mga disciples. Hindi po siya nalungkot dahil nabetray siya ng kanyang mga kaibigan. Sabi dito, he was in agony, sorrow, grief to the point of death because he would be forsaken and smitten by God. Jesus was dreading, nangangatog ang kanyang katawan nangangatog ang kanyang kaluluwa at tatatakot ang kanyang spirit because he saw, he already anticipated the pain of God's wrath and God's anger and punishment that will be upon him till he die. 
at the cross. This is the cause of Jesus' sufferings. The measure of Christ's agony in Gethsemane is the measure of suffering which Christ endured in bearing the wrath of God towards sinners at Calvary. Yung suffering ng Panginoon na ito na nagdudulot ng kamatayan, siya mismo ang mamamatay para sa tao, para sa iyo at para sa akin. Doon sa Gethsemane, nakita ng Diyos, ng Panginoong Jesus, ang lundo, ang bigat, ng sukat at hangganan ng kanyang aabuting kamatayan dahil siya lamang ang nakakita kung paano karumi, kapangit, nakakahiya at karumaldumal sa harapan ng Diyos ang lahat ng pagkakasala ng buong sangkatauhan at ang, ang kapaitan, ang dulot ng, ng kasalanan na ito ay kanya pong papasanin. It is not about the pain of the flagellation and the nails to po upon his hands, upon his feet, ang kanyang tatamasahin, kundi the very pain of God's wrath against all the sinners will be upon him. The measure of Christ's agony at Gethsemane is the measure of the love of God for you and me, for all the sinners, which caused him to die that we might live. He, hindi niya po ito kailangan gawin, pero walang ibang pwedeng gawin, magawa, walang pwedeng ibang gubawa nito maliba ng Diyos. Dahil sukdula ng kasalanan ng tao, walang makapagbabayad ng kasalanan ng tao sa Diyos, at walang makapagliligtas po sa atin maliban sa dugo ng Diyos. And Jesus was at the point of this defining moment. He saw the gravity of man's sins and the gravity of God's wrath right before the Garden of Gethsemane. And he faced it all by himself. Let us think about the sufferings of the Lord. Let us think about how Jesus suffered for us. And sana po wag natin makakalimutan ng kapangyarihan ng panalangin na ito ng Panginoon na nagbigay sa Kanya ng defining moment saying to all of us that I suffered because I love you. The suffering of our Lord was not merely Him in His humanity alone. He struggled no po, between the ugly realities of death at the cross. Nakita niya po ang ang Katuwiran ng Panginoon, nakita niya ang kagandahan ng Diyos Sama at ang kalinisan ng Diyos Sama, ang lalim ng ka, ka, kalooban at ang lalim ng katuwiran ng Diyos. He, Jesus alone, could fathom the depths of God's righteousness. And He alone, no, Jesus can fathom the depth of man's sin. Nandito po siya at the defining moment na uunawaan niya at kita niya, kilala niya ang kagandahan at kabanalan ng Diyos Ama. Ngunit habang nabuhay siya dito sa mundo, nakita rin po niya at alam niya ang dahilan bakit siya narito. Dahil sa sadlak na kalagayan ng mga tao ng buong mundo dahil sa kanila, sa ating lahat ng mga kasalanan natin. At ang kanyang kamatayan sa krus ang siyang makapagbibigay kaligtasan lamang sa atin. Yet with all this mess, with all the sufferings that he counted, with all the, the, the mess of, of vision of sin na, po, na nakita ng Panginoong Jesus, yet he still resolved to give his life as a ransom for all of us. We did not just see Jesus laying down the cause of his sufferings at the Garden of Gethsemane. At the Garden of Gethsemane, he also lived up to God in perfect surrender. You see, nakita po natin dito in verse 39, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will 
be done. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time saying the same thing. Not my will, but your will be done. Living up to God in perfect surrender. There is no elusiveness here. Hindi po iniwasan ng Diyos ang dakilang plano ng Diyos Ama to redeem us all. It was very difficult for Jesus because he saw the holiness of God, the righteousness of God the Father, yet he saw the misery of man because of sins. And it became his defining moment. Kung maaari lang, na po, wag nang ibuhos ang Diyos ang kanyang galit sa kanya mismo because of the sins of man. Pero kahit ganun pa man na naunawaan niya na dadalhin siya ng cup of God's wrath na ito, dadalhin siya ng cup of God's anger and cup of God's punishment na ito to the point of death, he still say, not my will, but your will be done. Jesus intentionally proceeded according to the plan of God the Father. Between two times, Jesus was praying no, and going back to the disciples. Nakita ng Panginoong Jesus that the disciples were sleeping and resting. No po? In verse 40, then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Well, hindi po ito prayer meeting. Hindi po niya tinawag ang mga disciples to pray for him. But Jesus called his disciples to join him to pray for themselves. It was not Jesus at the verge of failing. It was not Jesus at the verge of temptation. It was for the disciples seeing no po na their lives their flesh to po are weak and frailty so makita po natin dito that the Jesus urged his disciples to pray to keep watch and not fall into temptation ano po bang ibig sabihin nito ng sinabi ng Panginoon na pray that you would not fall into the into temptation. Kung makikita po natin in the earlier verses on the earlier chapter here in Matthew, bago po dumating yung Matthew chapter 26, we see here kung paano po buhay ang mga disciples na po lumakad ang mga disciples imperfect as they were. Bisa pinag-uusapan nila Jesus kung pupunta ka na sa langit who will sit at the right of your of your hand at the right, at the left of your hand something like that sino po ang um, greatest among us at pinag-uusapan din nila minsan no na Jesus will be captured and will be arrested and then bigyan sasagot si Peter hindi yan mangyayari over my dead body and um, even in the last supper no po pag-uusapan pinag-usapan ng Panginoon nila ng Panginoong Jesus na there will be someone here no who will betray me and then si Judas siya pa mismo yung malakas ang loob na magsasabi na hindi ako yon <laughs> so we see the imperfections of the disciples and kaya ang sabi ng Panginoon manalangin kayo magmasid kayo upang hindi kayo mahulog sa tukso. At, at, at ano po yung tukso na yun? It is not just about the temptation of sleeping during praying time. No po? It's more than that. It is no po, yung sinasabi ng Panginoon dito because the flesh, because yet the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Ito po yun eh. We want to follow Jesus we want to serve Him. We want to walk with Him. Yet our flesh is weak. And what's in the flesh? Ano po yung nasa flesh na yun? It is our appetite, our affection, our disposition, our desire. That sometimes, no, malapit ka na sa Panginoon, ginagawa mo na ang mga bagay patungkol sa Diyos. 
and you have the stature of being a leader, a mentor, a pastor, yet, no, nandun pa din yung kalakasan ng tawag ng iyong sariling appetite, uh, disposition, um, ng iyong affection at ng iyong desires at nalalayo ka sa kalooban ng Panginoon. Kaya dito, ang sabi niya, uh, it is not for Jesus no, that uh, He admonished these disciples. Gumising kayo. Keep watch. no, Do not sleep. Do not rest. Keep watch. Pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Mga kapatid, this is very uh, important. And uh, Jesus, makita po natin siya in the Garden of Gethsemane. Yes, his flesh was getting weak. No po? That even to the point na nahuhulog sa kanyang, uh, lumalabas sa kanyang pawis ay dugo. Talagang he was tormented with agony, sorrow, and pain. Pero ang panlaban niya dun sa, sa weakness of the flesh na iyon is not his appetite. He's not, it's not his discretion, no, nor his disposition, nor his desire, but the will of God. And this is living up to the Lord. This is living up our will to the will of God the Father. Kaya point number two we can see here, we can learn here, what can Jesus get see many prayer teach us? Ano po ang tinuturo ng ng panalangin na ito ng Panginoong Yesus. Napakaiksi lang. No? Kung maaari, huwag ko nang inuman ang saro na ito. Pero, hindi ang aking kalooban na masunod, kundi ang iyong kalooban. Ano pong itinuturo nito? So, number one, no? makita po natin, um, Jesus taught us to pray sacredly. Yung merong time na it, it's just between you and God. Maraming mga panahon na tayo nananalangin no po, with our family, with our life group, with the people na no nakakilala natin. Even publicly, we pray. And, pero sana itong Getsimani na ito ay matuto sa, maturuan tayo na magkaroon tayo ng sarili nating Getsimani sa kapanahonan natin ngayon. Where we could meet God in our agony, in our tears, in our pain, and say to the Lord that this time is between you and me, Lord. Um, walang ibang mamamagitan. And we can see here, no, na even si Jesus, dinala niya yung kanyang mga disciples dun sa Garden of Gethsemane. Pero makita po natin, he move a little farther. Pumasok pa po siya ng kaunti dun sa garden. What does it mean? Na po, a prayer that is sacred is leaving the distractions behind. A, a prayer that is sacred is just you and the Lord. A prayer that is sacred is willing to go farther, farther, up until you feel your nothingness and the allness of God right before you. And this was Jesus' defining moment in his human weakness. He drew himself to God. He drew himself to the Father. He draw himself even farther, more intimate, closer, deeper into the presence of God. Where is your Gethsemane these days? I hope that we could learn the importance of praying sacredly before God by be building a sacred place, a sacred heart before God in prayer. Number two, pray purposefully. Ito ang itinuro ng Panginoong Jesus nung siya ay nanalangin 
sa hardin ng Hetsimani. Ang sabi niya, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. The human weaknesses of the disciples did not totally excuse the disciples to pray. Napapagod silang lahat, puyat silang lahat. Maaring talagang pagod na pagod. Pero in, kanila ang Panginoong Hesus ay talagang inurge pa rin po sila, talagang sinabihan pa rin po sila for one final moment. Dahil malapit na po siyang mapunta doon sa sa uh, pag-arrest sa kanya at uh, up until doon sa cross. And this could be the last moment of his rebuke to his disciples. And his last rebuke to his disciples is to watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Arise, pray, so that you will not fall into the trap of Satan. Watch, pray, so that you will not be deceived. Watch, pray, so that you will not be distracted anymore. Watch, pray, so that you will be strong. Minsan po, na nalangit kami sa bahay, no po, we have four children. Hulaan nyo na lang kung sinong anak ito. <laughs> Meron po siyang desire, no, na bilhin ng isang bagay para sa kanyang sarili at sa kanyang mga kagustuhan. And one time, Pastor Al, during our prayer, he was praying, no, uh, to our, to this particular child of us, Oh Lord, bless mo po ang desire ng kanyang puso at yung ikaw po Panginoon ang ano po ba magsasatisfy o magpo-purify ng kanyang desire This is our defining moment when we pray purposefully It is not God it is not only we seek God to bless us to satisfy our desire but to purify our desires That we learn to die with all the desires of, of all the lust of the flesh and the lust of our eyes and the desires of our flesh. This is a purposeful prayer. More than the things that you could do, Lord, bless me as I lead the life group. Oh, bless me as I engage with this work. Oh, bless me as I travel. More than that. Lord, when I travel, when I do this work, when I go by myself, when I travel alone, Lord, help me to keep watch and not to fall into temptation. Uh, this week, God had brought me to brokenness and, I, I, and He, the Holy Spirit, gave me this prayer and, and this made me Uh, really broken before God. And I said to the Lord, Lord, when I die, may I die in your presence. And as I continue to live, may your presence never die in me. We cannot ask God's blessings for any acts of disobedience. In praying purposefully, mga kapatid, hindi natin pa pwedeng humingi, hindi tayo pa pwedeng humingi sa Diyos ng mga pagpapala sa mga akda nating pagsuway sa Kanya. We cannot pray to the Lord, Lord, sana hindi ako mabuntis kung ginawa mo ang act na iyon in a premarital sex. A young lady cannot pray, Lord, help me not to be pregnant if you did it in a premarital sex. Hindi ba maaaring sabihin ng isang lalaki na, Lord, samahan mo ako sa gawain na ito, sa lakad, sa lakad na ito, at kumatagpuan mo po ako na ako'y mahuyog sa kasalanan, sana po'y huwag akong mahuli. We cannot do that. We cannot ask God's favor for any acts of disobedience. God is righteous and God po, gives us a life that is purposeful according to His righteousness. 
Number three, pray honestly. In verse 39, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me. Be taken from me. Yet not as, as I will, but as you will. So, pangatlong beses, tatlong beses po niya ito binanggit. So, very honest ang Panginoong Jesus to say, kung maaari lang noong lampasan na ako ng saro ng kapaitan, ng kamatayan na ito, ng galit ng Diyos na ito. So, balit not my will, but your will be that. Pray honestly. Express our grief to God. Express our our sorrow and agony before Him. Ito pong pandemic na ito ay nagdulot sa atin ng napakaraming sakit ng kalooban at napakaraming pagdududa at takot. Ang tanong natin, were we able to come to Him just like Jesus? praying in the Garden of Gethsemane and saying in fear, in grief, in sorrow, in pain, Oh God, ano po, sana po malampasan ko to at hindi na po ito dumaan pa sa akin. I, I believe we have this honest prayer before God. And it is good. It is good that we pour out all our pains, all our sufferings before God because He cares for us. At kung hindi po natin ito ipo-pour out sa kanya, nakakatakot eh kasi hindi tayo makakarating doon sa mas malapitan pang panalangin. Let your will be done. If we cannot be honest with our feelings right before with God, ito po ay maglalagay sa atin ng pader, ng wall before God and ito ay mag magdudulot sa atin ng pagdududa, ng takot that God really doesn't care at atin na lamang pong iinumin ng kapaitan sa ating sariling kaalaman, kaparaanan, at kalakasan. Offer all your pains, your grief, your sorrow, your anguish to God. Let this be our prayer to the Lord. Sabihin po natin yung mga unedited prayers natin. And we can only do that before God. Na wala ibang taong nakakarinig. Lord, I feel this. Lord, I desire this. Lord, I don't want this. Lord, how I wish ganito po ang nangyari. Lord, kung hindi po ito, sana po, Panginoon, ganito po. This is an honest prayer. And you know, when we become honest before God, it opens a supernatural health sa atin. Yung honesty natin nagbibigay sa atin ng tunay na, na pagkakataon upang tayo matulungan ng Diyos. You know, in, in, in the accounts of the gospel, only Luke mentioned in Luke 22 verse 42 that an angel from heaven appeared to Jesus and strengthened Jesus. Bakit kinailangan ng Panginoong Jesus ang anghel? No po, hindi po, hindi po binigyan ng anghel ng supernatural power si Jesus because Jesus is complete with His power to bear the cross. Pero during this time, talaga pong yung buong kaluluwa ng Panginoon ay napighati, naubos ang kanya pong iyak at luha dahil daladala po niya ang kalinisan at kaluwalhatian at katuwiran ng Diyos at nakita rin po niya at dala rin po niya ang karumihan ng tao dulot ng kasalanan. And he cannot get up. He cannot... Wala po siyang ibang masalita sa Panginoon. At ang sabi pa po ni Luke, his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. At alam niyo po, the, whole, the, the, the angel came to him, kinailangan dumating ang hell sa, ang anghel sa kanya upang siya ay palakasin. It could be the touch of a supernatural thing from heaven na po because maaari na po kasing mamatay ang Panginoong Jesus sa hardin ng Gethsemane because of this sorrow and grief. Pero hindi ito ang kalooban ng Diyos Ama. Hindi po siya mamamatay sa sorrow and grief. Hindi po siya kailangang mamatay sa kanya pong kal, uh, kadalamhatian. Doon siya mamamatay sa krus 
kailangan niya munang bayaran ang lahat ng ating kasalanan. The cross is the ultimate and the only place for us to be redeemed. Jesus needs to continue on and to complete the redemptive plan of God. And when no one attend to Jesus and when nothing can appease his agony, an angel came to him. It could be his guardian angel as a human being, you know, for Jesus. And he attended. At ang sabi po doon, yung pag-attend ng, ng, ng angel kay Jesus, hindi po siya nagkaroon ng supernatural power at hindi niya na mararamdaman ng anumang sakit na po na, na, na mararanasan niya sa koronang tinik, sa flagellation, sa cross. No. Ito pong strength na ito na binigay ng anghel sa kanya. Alam niyo po nangyari, he went back. This enabled Jesus to pray more. This enabled Jesus to earnestly pray more, deeper, heavier, na po, getting closer, up until na po talagang fully he surrendered to the will of God the third time. Hallelujah. Praise be unto Jesus. This prayer of Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane taught us a surrendered prayer. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Many praise a heart pouring out prayer, yet never pursues a will surrendering prayer. At marami sa atin, nakakapanalangin ng honest prayer before God. This is how I feel. Nasaktan ako, Panginoon. This is how I feel the sorrow and the agony. Lord, I lament. I feel so sad. Lord, this is how... Uh, nakita ko ang mga pangyayari na talaga nakasugat sa akin at huminto na po tayo doon. And we never entered and we never go farther into our prayer and uh, that is a surrendered prayer saying to the Lord, Yes, ito nararamdaman ko, nasasaktan ako, gusto kong gumante, but not my will, but your will be done. Lord, nasasaktan ako, sobrang na hinagpis ako, gusto ko pong mamatay, but not my will, but your will be done. Surrender is an act of prayer, and prayer is an act of surrender. It is hard to pray because it is hard to surrender. It is hard to surrender because we do not pray. He who prays well, surrenders well. Likewise, he who surrenders well, prays well. A soul in true prayer is a soul in true surrender. Prayer then is the key to a surrendered life. And surrender is the key to prayer. Sometimes we think that prayer is just like yung panalangin na para lamang magpasalamat ka sa Panginoon at, uh, at humingi ka ng tulong sa Kanya sa mga bagay na hindi mo magagawa sa mga kapanahunan na ito. Pero alam niyo po, ang prayer ang siya nagbibigay sa atin ng endurance, ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos upang makilala natin siya at ang kanyang mga kilos at ang kanyang kalooban. At makakarating lang tayo doon kung tayo ay surrendered, kung tayo ay suko, kung tayo ay nakakubli nakalagay sa ilalim ng kapangyarihan ng Panginoon. And this is surrender. And when we know our place, and when we know where we are when we pray, when we know that our will is not of, uh, when we know ng kalooban natin ay dapat nakapailalim sa kalooban ng Panginoon, then we can pray. We can pray in a surrendered prayer. Napakahirap manalangin kung hindi po talaga tayo fully surrendered to the Lord. At ito ang admonition po sa atin. Ang tunay na panalangin ay nag, nag, uh, naggagaling sa tunay na pagsuko sa Panginoon. Ang panalangin ay susi. Ito po ang susi upang tayo ay patuloy na sumuko at magpakumbaba, magpasailalim 
sa kapangyarihan at kalooban ng Panginoon. Let's have a quiz. No? Tayo po ay magkaroon ng quiz ngayon. Why can't we pray this prayer? Not my will, but your will be done. Bakit hindi po tayo nakakapanalangin ng ganito? Letter A, I am not willing to pay the cost of sufferings. Letter B, I know what to do with my life. I just need to cry. I just need time to be alone. Number three, this will all too pass. Just carry on. Let God hear me. Let God hear my prayer. And just be positive. Bakit po tayo hindi na nakakapasok doon sa panalangin ng isang surrendered prayer? Dahil natatakot tayo magbayad. Natatakot tayong dumaan sa hirap. At number letter B, dahil gusto ko lang naman umiyak at gusto ko lang naman mapag-isa. Pero after mong umiyak, after mong mapag-isa, ang nasusunod pa rin ay ang gusto mo at ang kalooban mo. Or letter C, naniniwala ka, nalilipas naman to. Lilima, lilipas itong sorrow, lilipas itong problema na to, lilipas itong galit na ito. Sige lang, tuloy lang ang buhay. Narinig na ako ng Diyos, be positive na lang, bahala na. So ano po dito ang mas madalas na nangyayari sa inyo? Bakit hindi tayo makapanalangin ng isang surrendered kind of prayer? Pray not just to overcome sufferings, but pray to victoriously go through it. Takot po tayo sa sufferings. Iniiwasan po natin ang sufferings. Ayaw po natin ito. Gusto na po natin makarating agad doon sa katapusan ng pangyayari. Kahit mapait, kahit minsan nakakatakot, patapos lang to. So often we pray, Oh God, yung pong adversity, adversity na ito, kailan po ba ito matatapos? Ito pong pandemic na ito, kailan po ba ito matatapos? We want to go to the end na. At iwasan na natin ang mga processes, ang mga kaparaanan ng Diyos. Gusto lang natin matapos agad ang adversity, ang sufferings. Rather than asking the Lord and seeking God's help, Lord, paano ko po ba ito haharapin? At ikit sa lahat, Lord, paano mo ito gusto kong, gusto mong maharap po? Paano mo po ito nais kong lakaran? Paano mo po ito nais kong maunawaan? Prayer is one of God's primary provisions for us to endure and to persevere with all kinds of affliction and even difficulties in life. Remember, pray, pray that we, that you and I will not fall into temptation. And it's only by a surrendered prayer that we will only keep, keep praying. Keep surrendering. Keep watching into the will of God being obeyed in our lives. When you feel you have expressed everything you can about what is on your heart, po, kapag ka, sa tingin natin, na-express na natin lahat sa Panginoon, yung honest prayer natin, at narilisa natin sa Kanya lahat ng agony and, at pain natin, sana matuto tayong sabihin ng mga kataga na ito. Lord, into your hands, I commend my spirit. Lord, not what I want, but what you want. O Lord, I turn my life and will over to you. Lord, I surrender my control again and again. And I place myself in the power of your love. Jesus prayed this three times in the Garden of Gethsemane, not my will, but your will be done. It is expressing feelings, releasing control from ourselves to the powerful hand of God upon our lives. And this practicing control, this releasing control, is not just a one-stop thing. It's a practice. It is placing our lives into God's hands in an ongoing process. Sometimes, minute by minute. 
Thus, Jesus, in his surrendered will to the will of God the Father, he is resolved to do and fulfill God's will. The evidence of a surrendered prayer is a surrendered life of followership to God. Magkakaroon lamang tayo ng isang sukong buhay kung marunong tayong manalangin ng sukong panalangin. Not my will, but your will be done. And therefore, in all aspects of your life, in every season of your life, in every effort that you have for God, So you walk in righteousness, you walk in His holiness, you walk in followership to Him. Hanggang kailan? Hanggang saan? Hanggang kamatayan. Therefore, Jesus in verse 46 of Matthew chapter 26 says, Then He returned to the disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Verse 46, he said this, his defining moment, rise, let us go, here comes my betrayer. Jesus, with all his surrendered prayer, exhibited a surrendered life, living a surrendered path, obeying every part of God's plan to redeem you and me till death at the cross. Jesus, after going through a taste of death in Gethsemane, he lived up a prayer of surrender to God, declaring, not my will, but your will be done. He was able to stand up courageously to move head on, facing his betrayer, facing his accuser, facing the flagellation, facing the execution at the cross. Why? It was his defining moment affecting everyone who ever lived. He submitted to the will of the Father. He drank the cup of God's wrath for you and for me. The bitter drink turned to be the best drink ever that we share today in remembrance of His great love for us. The cup of God's wrath becomes the, God, the cup of God's redemption for us. And now we can drink this cup of redemption. We can drink this cup of deliverance. We can drink this cup of forgiveness and we can drink this cup of hope that one day we will see our Savior face to face. Mga kapatid, what is your Gethsemane today? What do you pray in agony, grief, and sorrow? Natandaan po natin, isang bagay na tayo ay maging matapat sa ating panalangin at maging matapat sa Diyos sa lahat ng ating mga nararamdaman. Subalit isang dakilang bagay pa rin ang makapanalangin ng suko sa harapan ng Panginoon. At ang masabi po sa Kanya, ang napakamakapangyari ang panalangin, not my will, but your will be done in my life. It's one thing, To pray an honest prayer, it's one great thing to pray a surrendered prayer. What is the substance of your prayer? Ano ang lundo ng iyong pananalangin sa tuwida? Lalo na kapag kaharap mo ang Diyos. Sana mga panalangin natin ang mga pagluha at ang agudi at sorrow and pain po natin. Don't just serve the me, my, mine purpose. But just like Jesus, His agony carried the will of the Father that served for the salvation of every one of us. Where does your Gethsemane prayer lead you? After you pour out your agony, after you pour out your, your, your pain and your sorrow and saying to God, Lord, let your will happen and not my will. 
Let your will be done. Not my will. Let your desire come. Not my desire. Saan po tayo dinadala nito? At sana, makita natin. Just like Jesus. After he prayed at the Garden of Gethsemane, he headed on. Jesus headed on to the completion of his mission to the cross. Doing and fulfilling the will of the Father to pay for our sins. Drink the cup of God's wrath. Mga kapatid, may our Gethsemane, may our agony, may our sorrow, may our prayer, let your will, Lord, not my will to be done, lead us to one thing, the cross. And what is the cross? That is death. Dying to self. Dying to our flesh. Dying to our own desires, dying to our own appetites, dying to our own weaknesses, dying to our own righteousness. May our prayer lead us to Jesus at the cross. Not my will, but your will be done in my life. Mga kapatid, if this is the first time you have heard this message, God is inviting you to a very relationship with Him, a very personal relationship with Him. To understand the deep sense of prayer is to have first a deep, a true, authentic relationship with Him. Jesus prayed to God and he said to him, Father, this kind of surrendered prayer is only founded in relationship. And we can only go farther, deeper into this prayer if we are one with God. Today, I'm inviting you to come to his invitation, to say yes to his invitation and say to him, God, I come to you. And I receive you to be my Lord and my Savior. Help me to draw myself to you. And looking at Jesus, he paid all our sins at the cross. And because of this, you can now come. You can now join him. You can now be his child. And to all of us in a relationship with the Lord, yet we cannot go farther and deeper into this Surrendered prayer to Him. Mas madalas, nangunguna pa rin ang ating kalooban sa, panad sa panadalangin at hindi natin nasusunod ang kalooban ng Diyos. Why not ask for forgiveness? Why not repent from all our self-righteousness and boastfulness before God? Just Come to Him with all honesty. Lord, yung agony ko, yung sorrow ko, dahil sa katigasan ng ulo ko, oh God, please forgive me. And if some of you who are really agonizing and sorrowful and you are overwhelmed with this pain to the point of death, because something happened, something unusual, something that you do not expect thing to happen in your family, in your personal life, why not go down and on your knees and pray to the Lord, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Help me to go through these sufferings. Hindi ko lang ito malampasan, kundi habang dinadaanan ko ito, tinuturuan mo ako magtiwala sa iyo. Tinuturuan mo ako Buo kong makita ang iyong kalooban. At pagkatapos nito, Panginoon, masabi ko, not my will, but your will be done. Let us all together pray to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. We thank you. Oh, we come to you, Lord, our God, our Father. Lord, we thank you, oh God, 
that we can come to you because of the righteousness of Jesus, because of what he did on the cross for us. Lord, today, if there's anyone here, meron po kami dito, mga kasama online, wanting to have a personal relationship with you, Panginoon, listen to their prayers. Mga kapatid, dito po ang ating ipanalangin sa Diyos, Panginoong Jesus. Pumihingi ako ng tawad sa lahat ng aking kasalanan. Tinisin niyo po ako. Patawarin. At ngayon, Panginoon, kinikilala ko na wala akong kapatawaran maliban sa iyong dugo, Panginoon, na akin pong ilalapal sa aking buhay, sa aking kaluluwa at spiritu. And today, Lord, I forsake all my sins and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Tulungan mo akong mabuhay ng ayon sa iyong kalooban. At sa amin, Panginoong Yesus, na talaga pong hindi na po kami nakakarating malapitan at malalimang panalangin, sundin ang iyong kalooban. Dahil lang nasusunod po ay ang kalooban namin, ang sarili naming appetite, ang sarili naming affection, ang sarili naming boastfulness. Oh God, please forgive us. Oh God, tulungan niyo po kami, huwag lang kami maging honest, but also to pray sacredly before you, to spend time with you. Lord, to pray purposefully, to keep watching, to pray, Lord, so that we will not fall into temptation and we will give our lives to you till the end, Lord, till we die, oh God. And help us, Lord God, to live according to your will, to pray according to your will, oh Lord. And help us to even suffer kung ito yung kalooban mo sa amin, dadaanan namin ito because kasama ka namin. And this will serve, Lord, a great purpose of redemption. O, patawarin mo kami, Panginoon, sa mga panahon na hindi kami nakakasunod sa iyong kalooban. And today, Lord, I ask the Holy Spirit to teach us to pray like Jesus prayed, not my will, but your will be in our lives. And today, Lord, those who are passing through sufferings, those who are agonizing, those who are sorrowful, Lord, we see and we believe that you are agonizing with them. You are agonizing with us and you are crying, Lord. You are crying. And right now, Lord, we see that every pain, every agony, every sorrow, Lord, you brought this all to the cross. And we will be victorious, Lord, with all this. And we will see the redemption, Lord, of Jesus and the deliverance of Jesus even when we pass through this suffering. So, God, thank you for making us, Lord, your children today and teaching us to have a surrendered life in a surrendered prayer. Till death, Lord, ananatili kami. Sinasabi at sasabihin namin sa aming mga puso, not my will, but your will be done alone. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. To God be the glory.